because this topic is just like I said, it's um, a topic that a lot of residents will have almost no experience or exposure to. Um, and maybe even in practice, you won't either. Um, but they're heavily tested. Um, so I'll just ask some questions. So if um, I'll, ju I'll just kind of kind of go for it. And if you, you're not there, then I'll find somebody else, you know, on the on the list. So the first one um, is one of the RP syndromes and, and these are, are glossed over. They could be, a lot of these could be a lecture in a, of themselves, but I'll just go through what's in the BCSC because that's what you can potentially be tested on. Um, so can somebody tell me, um, this is probably starting off pretty easy. So maybe one of the first years, what is the main or most well-known systemic complication of the RP syndrome, Usher's syndrome. Who do we have here? Do we hearing hearing loss? Yes. Hearing loss. Yep. Yep. So it's an RP with congenital sensory neur neural hearing loss, and it's interesting that the hearing loss does not get worse throughout life. It pretty it usually stays stable, and if you um, look at just the number of deaf children, um, about five to six percent of them will have RP. Uh, what's the inheritance for this disorder? I'm just, I'm not going to worry about that too much. It's autosomal recessive. Um, so this is on um, USH21. It's on the long arm of chromosome 1, 1Q41. And there are two types. Um, there's one, the first one is profound hearing loss with ataxia. And the second one is milder with partial hearing loss and no ataxia. There are, um, you can see in addition to ataxia, there's a cognitive delay and rickets. So low phosphate rickets. Rickets can be caused by several um, deficiencies, but this one's from phosphate um, and there's muscle wasting. There are lots of pigmentary retinopathies that have hearing loss associated and they're listed here. I won't go through them all and we won't go through many of them in this um, talk because they weren't in this chapter. So, um, but just to know that, that there are quite a few. So um, LCA, this actually was a very small um, part of this chapter. Can somebody tell me when the onset of, our, of LCA is? Maybe a second or third year might, might know when the onset is or approximately. Is it really young? Is it a toddler? Is it a teenager? Adolescence. It's actually infancy, um, which is a little bit unusual because most of the most of the retinal degenerations take a while. Um, so this is the most severe uh, retinal dystrophy causing blindness by the age of one year. Um, these patients also have nystagmus. I think that's a pretty um, well-known feature and um, you should look for these in, in, in young children with uh, nystagmus. They have sluggish or um, near absent pupillary responses. Um, they're, they're blind babies um, and they have photophobia, high hyperopia. They have probably have the ocular digital um, reflex. Um, they have um, extinguished ERGs and the, their fundi look very abnormal as you can see in these pictures. So um, there's only one, I believe, neuromuscular disorder that is on your list and it's Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, what is the gene? Does anybody know what the gene for this one is? I'm going to just yell somebody out. If not, uh, let's see. Destruction. We have Bradford here. Do you know the gene? Can you guess or just say no? I'm here. Uh, how about the Duchenne gene? I don't know. <laughs> I like it. It's a good guess. It's that was close. <laughs> it did start with a D. Um, which it, the dystrophin gene is abundant in muscles or um, also in neural synaptic tissues in the retina. There is no pigmentary retinopathy. Um, do you know what the ERGs look like? Anybody? All right. It's a normal A wave with a reduced B wave. I just kind of thought there's an A in the name of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. There's no B in the name. Um, and so here's a picture of what the um, ERG might look like. The top one shows is basically negative ERG. You see the A wave, 
you don't see the B wave compared to normal on the bottom. All right, so if you saw this on your OCAPs, would you know, would anybody know um, which syndrome we're looking at? We know it's an, an inherited syndrome. All right, this is, this is very hard. <laughs> so that's why I put it up. Bardet beetle, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly um, because I've, I've never seen this syndrome. Um, here's some more pictures. You see the polydactyly, the obesity and the pigmentary retinopathy. Um, it's auto autosomal recessive. Many of it, um, these cases are multigenic. Um, you see the pigmentary retinopathy, usually with no bone spicules. You saw the obesity on the, on the child on the right. Uh, the polydactyly hypogonadism, there's co cognitive delay. And this is um, the primary function of this gene that's, that's abnormal is um, of the proteins to mediate and regulate microtube-based intracellular transport. So these are in the ciliopathies that, um, class of diseases. Okay, so albinism is something that um, probably everyone will see during their career. Um, there are different classifications of albinism. So there's oculocutaneous albinism and ocular albinism. Um, so oculocutaneous is, um, you know, seen in the skin and in the eyes. Um, ocular is the skin and, um, skin and hair have normal pigmentations and only the ocular pigmentation is, is a problem. And then, a, a, a different um, classification of albinism is true albinism or albinoidism. So the true albinism patients have poor vision, um, nystagmus, and the hypoplastic phobia. Um, and you, you can see this up here um, in the in the photograph. It's very striking when you when you examine these patients. But you know you see their translumination defects and um, you usually you, it's pretty clear what it is. But I've also seen a lot of patients come in um, never having had this diagnosis and with, with uh, maybe albinoidism. Um, they don't have nystagmus, they have near normal vision, but um, it's important to, to be able to explain you know, why their, their vision is potentially not exactly perfect or normal. Um, so these are super highly tested. Um, because they can they can kill the patients. So there are two lethal variants that you definitely should know about. Can somebody tell me um, a first or second year because this is very highly tested, what the Chediak Higashi syndrome, um, what the the characteristics are? I think recurrent pyogenic infections because they have like an insufficient enzyme or um, uh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. And um, then, go ahead. I think Hermansky Pudlock has to do with um, thrombotic events and, and lack of platelets, or. In mm -hmm. And um, in what um, what uh, part of the U.S. would you be most concerned about, or from what um, heritage of the patient? Based on the based on the flag, <clears throat> and then, um, is that Puerto Rico? I may mess this up. I, I don't know my flags either, but but um, it's Puerto Rico. Puerto so um, <laughs> it's so on the right. We like you said, neutropenia, extreme susceptibility to infections. You can see these granules, like a, an accumulation of these granules, um, that might be on a path picture, um, and the Hermansky Pudlak or Pudlak syndrome, there's a platelet defect of um, Puerto Rican um, descent. Uh, CPEO, has anybody ever seen a patient in clinic with CPEO? Yes. Yeah, it's very- yeah, I think Dr. Byrich has one or two. Nice, yeah. Um, I'm, I'll show you a picture. This is an old or an old video Mrs. Haas is uh, compliant, but you see the ptosis here, and I'm going to advance. You can see the your, your video is not showing on the screen share. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Well, who? I'll go back. It just shows um, it shows ptosis and significant extraocular movement um, deficit. 
So the mitochondria in these patients are abnormal. Um, the, what do the muscle biopsy specimens show? Can Ragged red fibers. Yes, exactly. Um, so there's also an atypical RP and various systemic abnormalities. So if you see this guy on your test, he's a 27 year old with recurrent syncope and heart block. Um, and we just talked about CPEO. Current Sire syndrome. Exactly. So it's another mitochondrial disorder. Um, it's a variant of CPEO with cardiomyopathy, cardiac conduction defects, heart block. The onset is usually before the age of 10 years. So this is another important one, um, you know, that your wards will try to focus on things that can, will, can kill the patient, you know? And so um, this is certainly one of them due to the heart block. There's the pigmentary retinopathy is, is variable and many patients have good vision and normal ERGs. There are um, several other mitochondrial myopathies with pigmentary retinopathies and um, they have nice acronyms here. There's MID, MILAS, NARP, um, and they're just, um, they're not reviewed too much on your, in your BCSC. So just try to um, remember the acronym at least and, and probably you can get many of the questions from that. So um, imagine there's a 56 year old man, history of lung cancer, presents for nyctalopia, maybe a first year because I give you a lot of hints on this slide. What is what might your diagnosis be? Cancer associated retinopathy. Yeah. So cancer associated ret retinopathy. Car. Um, car. You can eat. You can remember cones and rods. Spells car. Um, they're autoimmune antibodies. Loss of photoreceptors. Usually without significant inflammation. You can see here um, on the right. Well, the pic. The uh, pictures show you. You know, there's. No clear pigment abnormality. There's some vascular attenuation here, actually severe vascular attenuation. Um, and at the bottom here, let me move my screen here. Um, you see disruption of the outer nuclear layer and ELM and decreases in the reflectivity of the inner segment ellipsoid zone by the arrows. Um, so they, you know, they, these patients can develop uveitis, but it can be with not a lot of inflammation. You see optic atrophy, somewhat of optic atrophy on the picture, but you know that will go along, like Dr. Pollard was mentioning with um, vascular attenuation long-term. Uh, so what's the treatment? Treat the cancer. Treat the cancer, treat the cancer yeah. maybe? Yeah, treat the cancer and um, steroid medications can be used as well. Okay, so what about MAR? Um, does anybody, um, well, first, what does the ERG show on MAR? Okay, I'll just go for it. ERGs are nobody's favorite, but there's a preserved dark adapted A wave and a reduced B wave, so you have a negative ERG. Um, what, what workup, if you see somebody with something that looks like that, this, no known cancers, what workup might you get? You might do a CT, you might do a PET scan and look for, you know, um, metastas metastatic melanoma at this point. These patients might ha never have gotten a diagnosis of melanoma. They might have just gotten something removed th from their skin 10 years ago. They don't remember it. This is a very interesting um, disease, uh, bilateral diffuse uveal melanocytic um, proliferation. This was, um, I don't know if anybody logged into VBS this year, but one of the recent talks had a great case of this and you didn't see as um, obvious of, of lesions, the melanocytic choroidal lesions as is here in this picture, but it's um, it, the FA um, and the autofluorescence look like this. So it's also a perineoplastic syndrome. It has multiple melanocytic choroidal lesions, a PSC 
You see iris and ciliary body cysts and can have exudative detachments. OCT here is pretty characteristic. Okay, this is a this is interesting, and maybe everybody um, here, since you do a lot of consults um, in the hospital, maybe at TGH, you you might see this actually. I had a in my residency, one of our uh, one of my co-residents saw this and just said, "I've got a guy with a quiet eye. He's got a hypo, you know, pretty quiet looking eye, but he has a hypo." And he went and asked Janet Davis. The first thing she said the wonderful UVA specialist. She, the first thing she said at, when he said hypopion is, is a patient on rifabutin, which I thought was incredible. Um, but this is a medication used for prophylaxis for MAC. So your immunosuppressed um, patients um, at TGH might be on this. And it can cause an anterior posterior uveitis with, with a hypopion. Um, so I don't think that this was actually in your chapter, but it is a really, interesting medication um, side effect. So um, let's go to A beta, a beta lipoproteinemia and vitamin A deficiency. So this is autosomal recessive. Which apolipoprotein is affected? Maybe a third year. Okay, it is B. These patients have fat malabsorption, fat soluble vitamin deficiencies, retinal and spin spinocerebellar de degeneration. What is the treatment? I think somebody could come up with this one. All right, supplement. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you got it, you got it. Vitamins A and E. So you see in the picture, these patients can get pale nerves, attenuated blood vessels and peripheral spicules. So um, what other conditions might result in a vitamin A deficiency? This is, an, this is a pretty, would be a pretty straightforward OCAPS question. Gastric bypass, anything yeah. impairing absorption. Great, good job. Gastric bypass, small bowel resection for Crohn's disease, other, you know, similar diseases. Um, they can, they can get um, a blind loop syndrome in some of these um, bowel problems leading to an overgrowth of bacteria that consumes vitamin A and result in a problem that looks like this. Okay, so there are only a couple of dermatologic um, disorders listed um, in this chapter. So if you see an RP-like patient that has skin lesions in a full term baby girl. What are you thinking of? Excuse me. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say um, RP. I, I ignore that part. So if you if you see a patient that looks like this with skin lesions these kind of whirls and veruca. You think of um, think of incontinenta pigmenti, also known as Lock Sulzberg syndrome. What's the inheritance? Excellent. Excellent, exactly. So this looks like I, I put I put RP, but I I meant to put an O in there. So it's like an ROP type patient. Um, they have um, streaky skin lesions, dental abnormalities, um, central nervous system disorders. They also have, a third of them have ocular involvement. So they have pigmentary uh, abnormalities, uh, peripheral non-perfusion. They can get neovascularization, looks like ROP and TRDs. Yeah, so it's excellent dominant, lethal in males. So you'll only see this in in girls. Okay, so a couple other, I think these are the last two dermatologic um, diseases. Pseudoxanthoma elasticum, I'm sure everybody has heard of the retinal problems with pseudoxanthoma elasticum. Um, you have this 
and, and I think you, many of you may, might see these patients. I've seen a few of them um, in residency and they have this plucked chicken skin like you see on the right, um, parapapillary android streaks, um, you know, this orange fun disappearance. And this isn't in your book, but I think it's really important to know they have, their CNVMs are very aggressive and need to be treated very aggressively because um, uh, these patients can become blind very quickly. Um, ichthyosis, you see here on the bottom, this baby um, shows scaling, dryness, and tight skin with the pigmentary retinopathy and crystalline maculopathy. Um, this is, I've never seen this. Has anybody seen this before? Amelogenesis imperfecta. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it before, um, but it is, it is, test, it is uh, tested. So it's a defective dental enamel production syndrome. Um, when it's associated with a cone rod dystrophy, it's called Jalili syndrome. And there's a mac, there can be a macular coloboma um, and pigment, pigmentary retinopathy. Okay, so um, a couple other renal disorders um, that are potentially tested. I've never seen questions on either of these two that I've um, that I can remember, um, but maybe they're just worth memorizing. Especially the coloboma, this Joubert syndrome um, with the coloboma, it's cerebellar malformation, molar tooth deformity, and choriretinal coloboma um, would be an easy test question. Um, so just kind of keep it in, in the back of your head there. And um, there are some other, other um, renal disorders, especially I would go through, if I were you guys, go through and try to memorize um, Alport syndrome. Uh, let me go back. Um, that has a cil uh, retinal ciliopathy, obesity, short stature, cardiomyopathy, and renal disease. That certainly I've seen tested. So um, not, I don't have really good pictures of it though. Otherwise I would, would show it to you to try to remember these things. Okay, allergial is, is definitely tested. So um, what is the corneal finding that you'll, find, you'll hear, hear of in allergial? Posterior embryo toxin. Right. What is that? What can somebody review with us? What that is? Anteriorly displaced. Anterior dis anteriorly displaced Schwalbe's line. Right. And what is Schwalbe's line? Helium. Yeah. It's it's base. I it's technically I I think it's the termination of decimates. So this, I mean, this is very commonly reviewed. Um, you can get a pigmentary retinopathy in these patients um, that has a peripapillary and macular predilection. Um, next organ system is GI. So FAP or Gardner syndrome is um, also all over your review books. The gene is APC. The inheritance is autosomal dominant with incomplete expression. I think the incomplete expression is important. The lesions look like this. Um, they're kind of ovoid. Um, they look like chirpies. They're smaller and ovoid. There are multiple of them and they should be bilateral uh, and widely spaced. They're oftentimes small uh, versus you know, there, there's conflicting um, information in, in the BCSC, I think over the years, because um, congenital grouped pigmentation like bear, tra uh, bear tracks is noted in your BCSC to not be associated with FAP. And that looks like these bear tracks here. Um, however, in some of the other review books and some of the older literature I've seen, it does say that it is associated with FAP. But just so you know, the most, updated version, at least that I've seen of 20, I think 2021 BCSC says that it is not associated, which might be a, a reasonable test question at that point. 
So we're, we're not going to do too many more. I think we're ending this because it's, you know, it is just a, a long review and it's mostly you guys are going to have to go and sit and memorize these things. Um, so we, but cystinosis is, is well tested. So where does the interlysosomal cysteine accumulate in cystinosis, the two places? Kidney and cornea? So cornea, it, it, yes, I, I believe you, you do get it in the, in the kidney, but I, I was just talking about in the eye. So um, cornea and retina. So there's, here's a, a picture of the corneal findings um, and the, the retina, retinal findings as well. So um, there are three different types. It includes nef nephropathic, which um, shows the corneal findings and retinopathy with no significant vision loss in these patients. Um, progressive renal failure as well. Um, you can also get corneal and conjunctival crystals in the late onset and benign um, variants. What is the treatment for cystinosis? It's cystiamine supplementation. All right, where are the, this is a similar question. Maybe similar answers. Where are the in Bietti crystalline dystrophy? Where are the crystals? All right. There's also crystalline keratopathy and crystalline retinopathy. So a lot of the crystals in in a lot of these disorders are keratopathy and retinopathy. I'm not gonna go through the neuronal steroid um, diseases because there are quite a lot of them um, and they're not great pictures or they're not reviewed very much in your book. Basically in BCSC, there's a table that goes through all of them, um, but doesn't, doesn't give much more information than what you see here. But they are aut mostly autosomal recessive um, and there's an accumulation of lipopigments in the lysosomes. They're early childhood. They show dementia and seizures. These are severe disorders. They do have pigmentary retinopathy. Um, the diagnosis is usually with genetic testing and a peripheral blood smear. Um, I suppose that you could get a, a question about the biopsy, uh, about a biopsy of a conjunctival or other tissues, and you see this fingerprint type granular inclusion. I don't recall seeing any path pictures, um, at least in my testing years, um, that, that ask what it is. Okay, so um, there are a couple of paroxysomal disorders. So um, the, the defective um, process is oxidation of a um, an accumulation of very long chain fatty acids. I think Zellweger syndrome is um, probably the most tested of these. Um, and it has, it's death in, death in infancy and these, you know, multiple systemic problems here. Um, but I, ha I have seen test questions on Zellweger syndrome. So pay attention to that one. Um, neonatal adrenal leukodystrophy um, these patients survive until later, until seven to 10 years old. You can see a picture there of the fundus photos of the neonatal adrenal leukodystrophy. Um, Refsum disease. So does anybody know how to diagnose, what's the diagnostic um, criteria or what you'd be tested on and on how you get this diagnosis? Okay, it's elevated phytanic acid or reduced phytanic acid oxidase um, activity. And the treatment, maybe a third year treatment for Refsum's disease. Okay, um, you have to restrict phytanic acid um, precursor to slow or stabilize the retinopathy. That's definitely a frequently tested disease. So memorize those two things, elevated phytanic acid um, and restrict the precursor. It's, it, I think more, more than elevated um, plasma 
levels of phytanic acid, they ask about reduced phytanic acid oxidase activity. Um, Tay-Sachs, what is the abnormal gene or enzyme? Maybe a first year, second year. Hexosaminidase. Yes, An A in particular, hexosaminidase A. Um, when, when, how old do these kids survive? How old do they, what age do they survive until? A couple of years. Yeah, right, two to five years. They have the, the cherry red spot. You know, you'll, there's always a um, list in your review books of the differential diagnosis of cherry red spots. Um, and this is one of them. Um, the ganglious, uh, ganglion cells surrounding the fovea are filled with the ganglioside and they, so therefore they appear gray white. Neiman pick is the absence of third year maybe. Sphingo, it's like sphingo. Yes, that's enough to get the question right. Yes, <laughs> myelinase. Um, some of them have a cherry red spot. Um, and so, and but there's also a, a milder form that has more of a macular halo. And this might be our last one that we'll go through. Um, Fabry disease. I, I it's hard for me to remember the also known as angiokeratoma corporis diffusum. What's the inheritance of this disease? Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Good. Awesome. Um, and the defect in the gene or protein, you know. It's a galacto. Yep, you got it. Also enough to get the question right. Um, alpha galactosidase A, what accumulates in this disorder? Some fat. <laughs> um, yes, um, ceramide trihexoside. I don't know if that one's very often tested. I probably don't, I don't think I, I don't think I knew that at any time. Um, so I, I don't think that it, it's very highly tested, but you see um, corneal verticillata, tortuous conjunctival vessels, which you can see here, and um, tortuous and dilated retinal vessels. So I think we'll stop there because I think that there are some drug to toxicities, but I think they were reviewed in other chapters. So, um, I think we can stop there. It's a lot of memorization. So um, just review it many times because it'll, they're, it, although they're very cumbersome to remember, they're very, um, they can be very easy questions and quick questions if you just know the answer. So, um, you know, no, they're not overly complicated. So um, definitely spend some hours before your boards or OCAPs in reviewing these. That's it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I know it's a tough topic. I appreciate it. That was great. I appreciate it, Ashley. Dr. Green.